Ah, welcome back, Duma. Seems that you took out Dean Ambrose. Well done. So you get your reward. As you said, there was a bounty on Dean Ambrose tonight and that he would be taken out by one of us. Epico was busy. I've been up here. So it was up to you. And you delivered. You shall be rewarded. What you earned tonight your bounty is going to multiple, multiple charities. Consider yourself a very blessed person for taking out Dean Ambrose. You helped a lot of people today. Congratulations. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, so you just heard Kurt Angle give all of the money... Uh, that that Zack Ryder just got off of the bounty of getting Dean Ambrose and beating him down and he gave it all to charity Very confusing storyline even for myself and I created the damn thing mostly because there was a hiccup I didn't want to choose Zack Ryder. I accidentally chose Zack Ryder. Anyway, um, not not a big problem It'll still work out in my favor. I just <laughs> That's what what are they gonna do? They're uh, the army of heaven. What are they gonna do? Be greedy? That just doesn't make sense to me, does it? No, I don't think so. So they gave all the money to charity. And Dean Ambrose has a concussion, so I hope those children are very happy with the little wooden horse that they get or, or the set of Lincoln logs, because it cost Dean Ambrose a head injury. Right now we've got the all-American, American, 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 American Jack Swagger taking on Brodus Clay and R-Truth. And, um, who to be in this match? Hmm. I mean, Brodus Clay, um, hmm. I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? I, I don't really know. I guess we could be R-Truth. We are one half of the tag team champions. So I guess I would make at least a lick of sense. We'll go ahead and do that. And while we do that, we are going to talk about some stuff that happened on Monday Night Raw. What is Brodus Clay doing? Are you shitting me? You're in a match, man. Um, okay, so speaking of Brodus Clay, I guess we could start there. CM Punk did take on Brodus Clay. Um, as a result of the comments that uh, CM Punk had last week because of Brodus Clay, he said, and I'm kind of quoting here, I'm paraphrasing, if you will, um, oh no, Brodus Clay and R-Truth looking to take out Jack Swagger, and the crowd cheers. Um, so, right, yeah, so you had CM Punk last week coming out saying, and he had another kind of pipe bomb promo, even though he kind of said my, the pipe bomb promos are just, you know, I don't know. That last week's um, promo was very, very good, but, um, you know, it was very strange. So, he did come out last week. He said that, um, why do you think Daniel Bryan dances and, and, and says silly catchphrases? Because he knows that it'll get him over, basically. And why do you think a monster, a 400-pound monster like Brodus Clay comes out here and touches your dirty little children? And does the uh, juck and jive, or whatever he said. And so, of course, oh, well, now they're going to have a match next week. And I believe next week they might have a match between CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. Um, that that could be a real thing. Um, and and that'd be a very good match. Um, because he's the only other guy who he talked about. He did talk about Tyson Kidd in last week's promo. But, um, you know, what are you going to do? Um, I guess I could talk about some SmackDown things as well. Because SmackDown also happened, and surprisingly enough, again, CM Punk, awesome on his promos. Very, very good. He used an analogy that um, the new Miami Stadium was renovated and, and blown up, and then, it, and then they made a new one. And, and that's kind of how he made the analysis of WWE. The old WWE, which was WWF, was The Rock's home. This WWE is CM Punk's home now not the rocks so i found that very 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 good writing if it was punk punk claims in his dvd that whatever he does he does and i guess with paul Heyman's help i'm i'm sure that they do a majority 
of uh, their promo work. Um, I, and I also did watch the CM Punk DVD, the uh, Best in the World. It got on. It's on Netflix. So Netflix, amazing. It is fan effing tastic. Um, only like eight dollars, eight dollars fifty cents, or is it eight ninety nine? I think it's eight ninety nine. Um, eight ninety nine per month. And it it shows a hell of a lot of wrestling DVDs on there. It's it's got all the uh, like the DX Revolution, the the Randy Orton experience, the John Cena experience, like all of those ones. So it's very good if you're a wrestling fan. And also it's got great series. It's got Lost and all that stuff. I could go on and on about um, Netflix, but <laughs> so I was I was watching the CM Punk DVD, and wow, that guy. Um, I didn't know this stuff about him before. I knew that he was, you know, frustrated um, at the time of the pipe bomb promo. I didn't know that he was actually going to leave. Um, I thought that was just part of the storyline. And and wow, it is it is very very well done. That DVD is one of the best. If if I excuse the pun, one of the best DVDs in the world. And um, I would extremely recommend watching that. That one, Chris um, Jericho's. And uh, Edge's as well was very, very good. Not not Edge's old one, Edge's newer one, the one he retired on. Um, those three are very, very good. The Randy Orton one I was a little bored with, you know. Nah, didn't, didn't enjoy it. Randy Orton's not got a whole lot of personality. But CM Punk, I mean, he's... Even, even in real life, he tells a great story. Even a story that I can't tell. I mean, I, mean, I wish, you know... I, I had the um, the dedication and drive CM Punk has because if you watch the DVD, the man is a saint, um, very very ballsy too in an, an attitude. I mean, so I I'm, I'm just saying I'm endorsing that DVD. That is Ginger King approved right there. That CM Punk DVD, um, the five out of five stars I gave it on 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 Netflix. It was it was very very good. I was entertained from start to finish, and even after it, I put a Facebook post up. Because I, I, it was so inspiring that I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make 2013 my year, and and I had to post something about it, so I did. And um, okay, so enough about CM Punk. We're done talking about Punk. Let's talk about the next big thing on Monday Night Raw for me, which was the Rock concert. Okay, now the Rock concert, which was the main event of the evening, um, was better than last year's. I did laugh at the lines. But was it kind of, you know, a little over the line? Because it was just, it was kind of like swearing. So it's like, oh, you get the cheap laugh. Um, if I say, you jackass, it's funnier than saying, you filibuster. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's funnier when people swear. That's what I've noticed. I've tended to notice that. And especially in wrestling things, you don't get a reaction until you swear. And then people go, oh, he just swore, ooh. And it's a younger demographic, so... It makes sense, and and it was it was after whatever nine o'clock my time, so oh, we just took out Jack Swagger and Brodus Clay in one fell swoop here. Um, but it was very good. He did a song about Vicky Guerrero, and that one was very good. I did enjoy that, and I I knew where it was going. Everyone knew where it was going. It was great. Um, and the the earlier one, I'm trying to remember what it was. If I can. I'm not sure if I if I'll be able to. Let's see. Let me think. It was it was to the jailhouse. No, what? No, it wasn't. What was it? The Heartbreak Hotel is what it was. And he sang it about Paul Heyman, and, and about Paul Heyman being a diva and having having saggy breasts. Right? Yeah, he did that, and that was kind of that was okay. But you know, I like Paul Heyman. I'm a Paul Heyman guy. So you know, yeah. The the Vicky Guerrero one was very good, and then um, he calls out CM Punk. Punk comes out and uh, well, basically he just he, he just starts to run at the Rock and then the Rock and him have a brawl and that ends the show. Um, so that was a very good ending to the show. Um, I guess I should talk about Punk's match and and the uh, the promo he cut after it. He did take on Brodus Clay. He did beat Brodus Clay with the Macho Man elbow and then he um, continued that move into a anaconda vice um after that match when brodus tapped out he goes now the rock is going to come out here and do what he does best entertain i just came out here and i did what i do best and i just made a 400 pound monster tap out 
So very good point there, and a, and it's a true, it's a fact. And then he goes on a fact opinion um, based promo, and it wasn't very strong. It it didn't do well with me because he was repeating himself quite a bit. He goes fact, I'm the champion. Fact, I haven't been beaten in 421 days. Fact. And then he goes opinion, the Rock will be new champ. You know, it's just kind of like okay, yeah, we 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 get the shtick. It's not a great promo, um, and. And it wasn't really a great promo. The one thing I really did like about it, though, is that he said The Rock is out here to entertain you. I'm out here to be the champion, and that's basically what you need to get out of that promo. And and it was a very and it, it was a very good complete story um, progression for that storyline. Um, and I and after this Raw, um, you know, Rock gets what Rock wants. And I'm thinking Rock wants that championship after the Royal Rumble. The only snag is, is Rock going to want to wrestle um, the weeks in between Royal Rumble and WrestleMania, which is like 10 weeks, isn't it? They usually have a longer period of time between the pay-per-views at the end of the year. So it, it would probably be 10 weeks. Would he be able, would he wrestle for that um and i don't think he would so i think it's more likely he'll lose the championship punk he'll lose the championship at the elimination chamber to the rock and i think that's much more likely to happen um because i i just don't see the rock um you know wrestling that much and, and if he's going to be the champion and not wrestle until wrestlemania oh what's the point of him being champion then you know why ruin punk's good thing he's got going for The Rock to be champion for, you know, two months and then lose to Cena at WrestleMania, if that's what's happening. And I'm, and I'm pretty sure that's where I'm leaning with this this theory of mine. So, you know, it's it's just all very confusing. It's still kind of up in the air. It's, it's starting... The puzzle pieces are slowly starting to fall into place. You're seeing things happen. And you're going to see things happen um, that are going to be used in the promos for WrestleMania. And, and that's what you need to look for, because when they say their promos, they have to say a certain line, because that line is going to be in the promo for WrestleMania, and it's going to be a good thing. So um, just watch for those, and then you'll kind of get a feeling of where this is going to go. As of now, I'm not 100% on what I, if I know anything. And even at the Rumble, I'm not going to be able to know anything. It's, it's, as soon as the Rumble is over and Cena wins, I'll go, oh, okay, I think I know what's going to happen. Or if... if um, CM Punk's match goes first. He tripped. The idiot. The big oaf just tripped over the steel steps. You must be joking. Throw his ass out. Get him out of that. Get him out of my ring. Let's dance. <laughs> Unbelievable. Get your ass out of my ring. <laughs> Come on. Who wants up first? Alright, we'll do it to Brodus. We take out Jack Swagger. Our truth one half of the tag team champions gonna win this match. One, two, and three. There you have it. Let's see if anything happens out of this. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, some of the things that happened on Raw. A couple important things as well, but let's see what happened here. Our truth Now, he always confuses me. I, I can't tell if this is his ending um, cinematic or not what is he doing <laughs> is this is this his gimmick of when he was crazy but he was a smoker and he liked bottled water as well maybe sure okay whatever <laughs> next match WWE champion John Cena taking on Kane and CM Punk um, and I guess in this match, John Cena's featured. Let's talk about John Cena a little bit. John Cena did have a steel cage match with Dolph Ziggler on uh, the 20th anniversary show of Monday Night Raw. That was a very interesting match. Um, and of course, I knew that Dolph's ass was going to be shown. I knew it. I knew it. As soon as the first time John Cena started to pull Dolph off of the cage, I'm like, oh, they're going to show his ass, aren't they? They showed his ass. I, I, damn it, I knew it. You can't, you just can't do that with Dolph Ziggler and not make a Mr. Ass comparison, right? I, I don't know. So there's CM Punk. Um, 
So yeah, it, that match ended up being a steel cage match. Big E got involved, and Dolph was about to hit Cena with the uh, briefcase. He ducked under it, hits Big E instead, and then F U one two three. AJ goes crazy. Not a whole lot of story progression there. Just a whole lot of uh, kind of a nonsense match, you know. Yeah. After last week's match, I mean, they couldn't really top it, so they had to add the cage, didn't they? Um. So that whole storyline, you know, meh, yeah. Um, Big E did talk a little bit again this week, but not too much, and it wasn't very important, so nothing to really go over. I do actually like um, John Cena's championship entrance. I do like it. It is very good. It looks very nice. Um, other things that happened, we had a Miz TV segment with Ric Flair. That was interesting. Um, in the end of it, in the end it was interesting. It wasn't too interesting in the beginning. The, be the beginning was basically Miz and Flair going woo, woo, and then strutting. It was very bad. It was not good. I didn't like it. Um, and then who should come out but Antonio Cesaro. Save us, Antonio. It was very well done. His promo, you two are, are the exact thing of what I want America to be. He's like, you two are the exact represent representation of America. Look at you. You're, you're just you're just old has-beens. You know, never was that type of promo. It was very good, and I was like, oh, thank you, Antonio, for saving it. But then, of course, you have Miz and Flair team up on him, hit, a, hit the skull-crushing finale, hit the figure four leg lock, and, you know, it's just a feel-good moment with a legend on the 20th anniversary of Raw. That's all that was. Um... So there was that, and that just kind of heats up the Miz Antonio rivalry. Um, I believe Santino was injured, so we didn't see a whole lot of Santino. Uh, let's see, who else? We have Wade Barrett. He did have a match against Randy Orton, and he beat Randy Orton clean. Um, I'm confused, to be honest. I'm I'm confused at why. Wade Barrett beat Randy Orton clean. No shenanigans. Nothing really happened in the match. It was just a really good match. And then he just, I'm going for the bull hammer elbow. And you're like, oh, it's RKO out of nowhere. He's going to lose. Nope. Bull hammer. One, two, three. He, he wins Randy Orton. So is Randy Orton in the doghouse? What's going on? What, when, when does Randy Orton lose clean? Cena doesn't lose clean, Randy Orton doesn't lose clean, CM Punk isn't going to be losing clean um, t t too often. Like, uh, Very perplexing. Either they really like... Either they really like Wade Barrett, or they are very upset at Randy Orton for some reason, and I, I, I can't really decide at which one it was, but Wade Barrett did win, and I'm surprised. Maybe they did it just because people like me saying... Wade Barrett would always lose that match. That's crazy. Um, so that happened. Um, let's see. Another great moment from Raw. Actually, a Divas match. A Divas match I enjoyed. Um, Eve versus Caitlyn. The first of the match wasn't great, but the ending of the match was very, very well done. Um, and it was very well wrestled. It was very well thought out by the Divas. It's a finish I've never seen before. They um, set the stipulation for Eve because of last week's Monday night um, match that she, um, you know, she left the ring and she just decided to get counted out because she's the champ, and she can do that. And, um, you know, so it just kind of turned out to them being on the outside, and you're like, oh no, what are they going to do? And then you just see Eve start to walk back into the ring, but Caitlyn jumps, and, and she runs around Caitlyn, and, or runs around Eve, and Eve doesn't see her, and she gets back in the ring, and Eve's in the ring. Eve still thinks that Caitlyn is outside, um, uh, on the other side of the barricade. She doesn't see Caitlyn, and Caitlyn hits her with a spear, and it looked like a pretty good spear, much due to the credit of Eve's selling it. And one, two, three, new Divas champion in, uh, Caitlyn. So, um, you know, that'd be, that'd be, you know, something I wouldn't really mention. In a, in a review, because you know, Divas aren't very good, but it was a finish that I've never seen before. Um, it was a pretty good finish, and Eve quit. <laughs> I'm sorry to spring that upon you, but Eve, who has been my favorite Diva, my number two Diva this whole year besides AJ. AJ has been number one, definitely, the most important Diva. Um, but besides Eve, it was it's only AJ. 
Now you have Caitlyn. Um, okay. Who's she going to defend the title against? Natalia? Oh, you mean the one you've teamed up with Great Collie and Hornswoggle? And you used to have a storyline about her farting all the time? Like, how am I supposed to take her seriously now? You know what I mean? It's just... Oh, it's so strange. So, it's just... We're getting a little lackluster on the Divas here. They're running out, and I'm, I'm, I'm very sad about that. We're going to hit our finisher on uh, CM Punk here and get rid of Cena and win this match. Not a whole lot of other stuff happened. Um, it was just kind of a lot of filler. Oh, the shield. Okay, I guess I should talk about that. That's the, the last little important bit of this little review type thing here. Um, Mick Foley is your first um, Hall of Fame inductee of the 2013 year, I guess, or 2012, whatever. Whatever year they're calling it. And, um, and before he can get any words out, here come the shield. Damn it, Cena. Here come the shield, and shield... Um, are about to attack Mick Foley, and then you hear, feed me more, and, you know, the shield gets angry, and they start taking him apart, Randy Orton comes out for the save, um, still two on three, you know, numbers game, and then you get, um, Sheamus to even the odds, and, uh, Ryback hits the shell shocked on Dean Ambrose, ending that, you know, you can't have shield always dominating, they have to be, you know, they've got to, uh, lose sometimes, and this is one of the nights that they lost, and it was very well, um, it was a, it was a good segment, it was a very good segment, um, and Dean Ambrose, I love how he sells moves, it's great, it's comical, it's not really realistic, but it is different, so, I like it, um, so there you go, the shield of the week, and I do love the shield, the shield of my new favorite thing, um, and, and I guess the last thing to cover would be the tag team match between, well, I mean, not the tag team match, the tag team of Team Road Scholars taking on Team Hell No. Now these guys tonight did a very good job in providing the comic relief for an absent Santino Morella. I believe Santino Morella has had surgery and is not able to be the comic relief. So you need to put in Kane and Daniel Bryan. And uh, what better way to do that than have Dr. Shelby come back for a four month um, follow up, <laughs> whatever, follow up um, diagnosis. Uh, so it starts out, what do you like about Kane, Daniel? Oh, he's tall. Uh, he makes fire come out of nowhere with his hands. That's cool. And he dances really well. Oh, ha, ha, funny Daniel Bryan. What do you like about Daniel, Kane? Um, he, he has a good beard. He's very agile in the ring. And he likes girls' clothing. Okay, so, okay, funny Kane. Very funny. And then here comes Damien Sandow and Cody Rhodes. Now, why are they here, you ask? Well, Dr. Shelby has set up an anger management test. He's going to bring them in to purposely get Team Hell No angry and uh, <laughs> and um, see how well they cope in an angry situation. And it was funny because instead of attacking Team Hell No, Team Road Scholars start attacking Dr. Shelby. They start attacking his reputation as a psychologist. They start saying... Uh, they, they they might as well be psycho psychologically evaluated by Dr. Phil. And that sends um, Dr. Shelby over the edge. Dr. Shelby freaks out, and he six Team Hell No on to Team Road Scholars. And they have a little bit of a brawl, and then they each had a match in that night. And it was, you know, same bubblegum match they've had for weeks now. Every week it'd be Kane versus Damian, Kane versus Cody, uh, uh, you know, Cody versus Daniel. And then, you know, whatever, vice versa, that same night. So, you know, the matches weren't great, but the segment was. The segment was very, very well done. Um, except for the end. The end was kind of cheesy. Um, so, other than that, you know, Raw was very good. Um, I liked it. It was, it was enjoyable. I got through all three hours. And um, so that's two weeks in a row of Monday Night Raw that I've sat through all three hours of it straight through. So, I'm very proud of myself. Um, and no, I don't have TiVo, so it's not like I'm fast-forwarding through the commercials. I had to um, figure out something to do during the commercials. It was not fun, <laughs> trust me. Um, but I did make it through the whole three hours. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to next week's Monday Night Raw. I mean, it'll it'll really lead up to... It's it's the go-home show, if I'm not mistaken. Let's Let me try to think here. Yes, it would be the go-home show 
of um, Royal Rumble. So I'm very excited to see what they've got cooked up for next Monday Night Raw. Um, SmackDown, Alberto Del Rio. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, we didn't talk really about that. Nothing to really talk about. Del Rio and uh, Ricardo, you know, doing their thing as face champions. And it, and it was just kind of a generic, oh, I'm the new, I'm the new champ and and you're 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 mean and big show did say what is he trying to be the hero of latinos or something you know kind of subtly racist don't do that big show don't bring in you know races that's you're gonna get yeah you're gonna get bad press even if it's not intentionally racist you're gonna get bad press that way um and 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 that's the kind of press you do not want Especially if they are um, <laughs> going for another campaign with Linda, that's that's not something you want to have recorded. So yeah, there was that, and this Friday we'll see more of Alberto Del Rio and his uh, Mexican party um, bash type of thing to celebrate him being champion. And I think it'll be much like the last time he was champion. Uh, um, I, I believe. Let's see. I remember there being. Pinatas and Rey Mysterio interrupted. There's a mariachi band, if I remember correctly. Uh, so we've seen this before, but it'll be a face Alberto Del Rio who will be doing it. So I'm very excited. Face Alberto Del Rio. We'll see how I, um, his mic work. He didn't do a whole mo a whole lot tonight, so I'm not going to judge him on it. I'll judge him on Friday as to see if he will be a good face or not, and uh, we'll have to see. I'm very excited for face Alberto. Um, he, he'll fit well with Ricardo. Ricardo's doing well. He always does. So yeah, very successful um, night in wrestling, and I hope more to come. <laughs> so there, there's your review, and we'll just finish this match up here. Kane versus Punk versus Cena. Who will be the next WWE champion? Uh, Cena is the champion right now. He's been champion ever since the reset. It just it feels weird to me. I watched CM Punk's entrance um, in this game a couple days ago. I was playing some just you know third uh, profile universe mode, just stuff. I kind of I just kind of wanted to uh, hmm, see how different that it would be if I just started from the beginning without any unlocks or anything. And it it felt weird seeing him without his championship belt. And I'm going to have to get used to it because it's not going to last forever. Cena rolling us up. We're going to have to kick out there. So, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna be very... I feel like um, CM Punk's time is over uh, as champion. It'll be either at the Rumble or the um, night after the Rumble or the Elimination Chamber. I think Rock and Cena are going to have a twice-in-a-lifetime match for the WWE Championship. And Cena's going to win it. That's what I think. But, you know, still, that's what I think. I'm not locking it in yet as my prediction. Um, and, and that actually reminds me that next week after Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown, I need to get those uh, Royal Rumble previews um, up and ready to go. So they've already announced a couple matches, and, and in whatever happens in the coming weeks, that's how I'm going to decide to uh, guess how the outcome will be. So... Those will be making a return. It worked well with TLC. Got a lot of great feedback. Um, a lot of people really didn't um, uh, have a problem with me doing them. Um, so, yeah, I, I liked them. I liked talking about them and guessing I got all of the matches correct. And uh, I'm hoping to go two for two so far this, this uh, YouTube season, starting with TLC. So we'll see if I can do that. Other wrestling, like second profile universe mode, that's just whenever I have the time. This this week has been kind of crazy with work. We've had corporate coming in. So when I'm at work, typically, if I'm not making pizza, I'm doing dough. And, you know, I just kind of get time to rest. But with corporate coming in, if I'm not doing pizza and I'm not doing dough, I should be cleaning. Um, so we're really trying to stress and get that out of the way. And um, tomorrow night, uh, Tuesday night, I should be getting videos back up on the reg. On the reg. That's something I'm using now. <laughs> Very weird wordage by myself tonight. Oh, his hands were not on the rope. He's rolling us up again. Um, so, yeah. Wrestling's doing really good. TNA, I don't watch. 
Um, I tried to watch it a couple months ago, and I, I just could, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And I know there's great things about TNA. I just can't watch TNA. I can't do it. I'd rather watch the Punk DVD again, I, to be totally honest. Punk gonna hit the go to sleep on John Cena, who is the champion. Let's get rid of Punk. Punk is out of the ring. Kane gonna pick up a surprise victory here on Monday Night Raw. One, two, and three. John Cena, the champion, gets pinned by Kane. Please, something happen. Please. Please, something happen. Oh man, something looks like it's gonna happen. Kane is celebrating. Kane is celebrating. And John Cena being a good sport, busted open and everything. Raising Kane's hand. Two good guys there. Oops, I just went straight on to the next show. Damn it, that's not good. That is not good. Uh-oh. I wanted to preview the next show. But, oh, look at that. You got the McMahons taking on the Rock and Sock Connection. What the hell? Are you shitting me? What is this? Okay, so, um... And again, on Raw is War... I'm trying not to change any of the matches unless I absolutely want to and have to. So, um, oh no. Damn it, I'm going to have to get out of this. Um, so I'm going to see if Universe Mode can't create something awesome. And McMahon's versus the Rock and Sock connection looks pretty awesome to me. Oh my god, spoilers. Spoilers. Ah. Stay tuned, because Raw is War is going to be amazing. There's your little sneak preview. I'm going to use this as a cheat sheet as to how I want to write this show. Mankind coming out alone on Raw is War, so stay tuned for that, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hurry and see the rest of that card, though. Let's see the rest of that card, and then I'll let you go. It's been a 31-minute video, plus the promo, probably 34 or so, to be totally uh, honest. Let's quit the match. I'm trying to think of anything else that might have been on Raw. Um, Sheamus versus 3MB in a Royal Rumble contest, and that was actually all right. Uh, 3MB won three on one, and they should have. Okay, so let's see. We got the Rock and Sock versus the McMahons, Mark Henry versus Jericho, Shamrock versus Bradshaw, X Pac versus Kane in a tables match. My favorite match. I love this universe mode. <laughs> They're like, oh, you're X Pac. Oh, you love tables. Here you go. Amazing. And then Stone Cold versus Johnny Ace in a rematch from last week. Alright, so I can probably think of something to write in the next couple days for that. Thank you for watching this video. Go ahead, like, favorite, comment, subscribe. Do what you got to do. And we will see you for Raw is War on Thursday. Thank you for watching your YouTube champion checking out.